Welcome back to another video guys. Thanks for joining me today. So today is the day we are going to be plugging um, the area where that Bradford pear was. Um, if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about or if you're new to the channel, click in the links in the description below. Um, those will take you to some videos on what we've been doing in this area of the lawn thus far. Um, there used to be a Bradford pear there and we pulled that stump out or my neighbor actually pulled the stump out. Um, and that was about two months ago. Um, and then when we, when we, when he pulled the stump out, we uh, kind of leveled things off as best we could at that point, and then just kind of let it be for the, the last two months uh, while we were letting that Bermuda kind of come out of dormancy and do its thing. Um, and then since then, we've had a lot of rain that has actually kind of naturally leveled things off as well. Um, but with that, it's also brought up some weeds and uh, it's also shown some of the rocks and it's washed some of the dirt away um, as well in that area. So to kind of prep this area um, starting last night and into this morning, um, I had to pull the weeds and then kind of pull the soil that had started to wash away back up into that area. Uh, and then just do some light leveling, nothing too major, just some really light leveling. Um, and then just also prepping the soil for the plugs. So this is one of those areas that I was talking about where I had some soil wash out, where it was kind of washing down this way down the hill. Um, so what I did is just kind of loosen up the soil, pulled some of it that way back up the hill. And then I also kind of pulled it down in this area because this little area was a little bit uneven um, and I just kind of leveled it out a little bit. The other spots I was having some uh, soil washed down as it was kind of funneling all down by these utilities sections. So I pulled some of the soil back up into the lawn um, just to kind of get, uh, so those utility boxes aren't covered for one, but I also, you know, using that soil is gonna be much better up here than it will be surrounding that whole area. So after I prepped the soil in that area, I guesstimate that I can get roughly 300 plugs uh, from where that established Bermuda currently is. Um, and then I also kind of guesstimated to make sure the plugs are evenly spread apart. They need to be roughly eight inches apart. So to ensure that I get good even coverage in that area, I just found the center of that circle and then I marked eight inch increments from the center of that circle with paint, just making kind of a cross in that circle. And then what I'll do is my first plugs will actually go where those paint marks are. And then from there, what I can just use, I can use those plugs as a guide to roughly fill in that area nice and even. So here's where I'm talking about um, where I've, I've kind of made a cross in the this circle area. And I found the center right here just by using a tape measure, nothing too fancy, found the center. And then I went uh, and marked an eight inch increments all the way up and all the way down and then I went across just like that and what I'll do is I'll use these initial markings to put the plugs here and then once those plugs are in those points I can use that reference to keep the uh, plugs nice and even all throughout this entire area while I'm plugging. One of the other things you want to make sure of when you're plugging Bermuda uh, is you want to make sure the Bermuda has come fully out of dormancy so a good, a good reference for that is when it's completely green um, and you, you don't want to plug it when it's dormant. Now, Real Low Dad, he did plug Bermuda when it was dormant and I think it ended up doing just fine for him, but I think in general, uh, most people will tell you that you should, uh, you're gonna be the most successful when plugging Bermuda when it's completely out of dormancy. Um, that's just what I've read and heard. But Real Low Dad's uh, a little bit of a rebel, kind of like Connor Ward. I also wanted to kind of give Real Low Dad a big shout out because he's also helped me with some of my planning with this area. Um, it may not seem like a, uh, he helped me a bunch to him, but he did help me a lot um, just through his videos and just uh, speaking with him and kind of communicating with him. He helped me a lot with this process just to kind of prep and plan. So thank you, Reload Dad. So the tool that I'm using to actually bring the Bermuda plugs over to this area is the Pro Plugger. This thing is really awesome. Um, you can't buy this at a local store. You do have to buy this online but I think the, uh, the yard butler plugger, the one that has the square, um, they're both roughly equally the, the same price. If the, but, the yard butler, I think, takes a little bit larger plugs. Um, these take uh, circular plugs that are a little bit smaller. But what I like about this plug is I can take, um, I don't, I'm not sure how many plugs, probably close to seven or eight plugs all at one time and then go and fill in those areas rather than taking one plug, fill it in, one plug, fill it in. Um, I can do things a little bit quicker with this and they're roughly the same price and that's why I got this one because I thought this was uh, just a 
really good deal and I liked and they're also a, a uh, family owned and run company so I, I love supporting those companies that are um, you know family owned and run by the family so um, I purchased this pro plugger to not give this to me um, but um, this is the first time I've gotten to actually use it in this uh, scenario so I'm pretty pumped about getting to use this and kind of telling you guys a little bit more about it as I use it. So before I get into the time lapse of the plugging process, I wanted to show you guys how quick and easy it was to harvest multiple plugs at a time. Once I got into the plugging process, I was able to harvest roughly 10 to 12 plugs on average before having to empty out the entire tube. Initially, I tried to keep the grass plugs in the tube as I pulled dirt plugs. You can see here in the video, the grass plugs would push out of the top of the tube as I pulled dirt plugs. This didn't end up being a very efficient method as it led to clogging and packing the tube full of dirt. Unclogging the tube was a bit challenging, so I don't recommend this strategy. So instead, what I chose to do was empty the tube out once I filled it with grass plugs, then I would pull all my dirt plugs completely separately. This ended up being a more efficient method and I also didn't have any more clogging or packed dirt issues within the tube of the plugger. Also, if you have an additional person to help with this process, it makes it go an awful lot faster. Mrs. Lawn Gardening came out to help me for a bit, which was much appreciated. Once I finished the plugging, I put a thin layer, no more than a quarter inch of soil over the entire area. I did this to help fill in any gaps in the holes the plug sat in while also giving the plugs a good bed to spread around in. Next I put a very thin layer of peat moss down, again no more than a quarter of an inch. I did this to help retain moisture as I do not want these plugs or soil to dry out. And then the last things I threw down was a light dose of Carbon X followed by a quick dose of RGS and Humic 12. The fertilizer you use does not need to be Carbon X, but I would choose to use a fertilizer with some quick release nitrogen. And of course, when I was finished with everything, I watered everything in. I'll be watering this area two to three times per day for a few weeks to keep the soil damp to help these plugs get established as I do not want the plugs or soil to dry out. So all that footage you just saw um, of me completing this project was a little over a week and a half ago and I wanted to show you guys how things were looking in just a short period of time. So obviously this area wasn't uh, an area I specifically plugged but you can tell um, from when a week and a half ago this has spread significantly this in this direction and it's also uh, in this area right in here has filled in drastically as well. Um, and then if you remember, this is where I did most of the harvesting and you can tell this is filling in and doing quite well um, for just being a week and a half out from all of the harvesting. Here's another area as well. So one of the things I wanted to make note of um, is when you're plugging Bermuda or probably pretty much any grass it's going to stress out to some extent um, and with that stress you're going to get some of the grass turning brown um, and it may wilt a little bit but you just got to make sure you stay on top of your watering um, and i wanted to show you an example of uh, that with one of these plugs right here so if you take a look at this plug right here you can see for example this uh, blade of this grass was part of this plug but it died um, because it just was not all the grass was actually rooted down into the plug because Bermuda has sprigs that are going across the ground so when I plug this I probably just cut that sprig and it wasn't rooted down um, so you'll notice some things like this dying and it's not the actual plug dying it's just some of the grass blades are not rooted in so you're gonna get you know some dying occurring uh, with that Additionally, one of the really cool things I noticed over this last week and a half was not only are the plugs growing and beginning to spread, but some of the sprigs that actually fell off the plugs started to root into the soil without, and that was unintentional. So I thought that was really cool. Let me show you that really quick. 
So right here is a plug. This is a plug itself. And then right over here is a sprig that fell off of a plug and it's rooting down uh, into the soil. Um, now it's very fragile. It's not, you know, the roots aren't very deep, but it, you can tell it's rooted because it's greening up and it's looking really nice. And like I said, this is a, a week uh, and a half after doing all this plugging. Here's another sprig that fell off that's growing um, and root beginning to root down. So I just thought that was really fascinating. Um, I just think one, that's one of the cool things about how Bermuda can work. Um, and to grow you can sprig it or you can plug it and i guess this was more like a sprilugging if you want to call it that i, I stole that word from real odad because he commented on one of my instagram photos uh, about this area so one of the last things i've been doing over the last week and a half um, is just making sure i keep the soil nice and damp similar to like what you do when you're seeding grass i just have been watering probably two to three times a week again just making sure the soil is damp i'm not soaking anything down and I did this just to continue to encourage growth with these plugs, just so they don't dry out or die, um, and just to help them be as successful as possible. So one of the other things I'm doing to this Bermuda area um, over the summer is every one to two weeks, I'm just putting down a very light dose, a spoon feeding application of Carbon X. It doesn't have to be Carbon X, it can really be any fertilizer that's a quick release fertilizer um, on this area to the Bermuda. Uh, just to help continue encouraging that growth and to get things to fill in a little bit quicker than if I were not to do that. And that application of fertilizer that I'm doing every one to two weeks, um, the amount of nitrogen coming from that application is maybe a quarter of a pound of nitrogen, but I'm going to guess that that application is probably going to be even lighter than a quarter of an inch. So like I said, it's just a light spoon feeding that we're allowing that, that grass to gradually uptake that fertilizer uh, and just run across this whole area to fill it in. So since I noticed the plugs were no longer stressed and they were actually starting to grow, this past Tuesday, I actually did the first mow on this area, um, knowing that it wasn't going to stress anything out. And I, I did, I mowed it at an inch and a half, just like I'm mowing the rest of this area. And it didn't cut much off, if any, on the plugs, but I knew just that little bit of trim on top of the plugs is just going to continue encouraging that growth on the Bermuda and making it spread horizontally. So at this point in the project, I just need to keep up with my watering, uh, keep up with my spoon feeding with the fertilizer, and more importantly, I just need to mow, mow, mow. I mean, as frequent as I can, the more I mow this Bermuda, the faster and quicker it's going to spread across this entire area. So that's how this whole plugging project went. I've really enjoyed working in this area and just kind of seeing things progress. Um, I hope you guys stick around uh, and subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments below. I will be doing more videos on this area as things continue to progress, uh, just to show you that progression as well as share with you some of the things I'm learning as I move along with my Bermuda grass. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. I'm Ben the Lawn Guardian, and I'll see you in the next video.